God, if you don't do anything else, you certainly have done more than enough. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We count these and all the blessings done. Thank the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's, let's put our hands together and I write the praise people.
shall be called Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand, amen, as we declare, declare together our weekly declaration. Amen. Our weekly declaration and those that are uh, joining us in our cyber sanctuary. Amen. I think we should know, amen, by now it is Psalms number one. Amen. God bless your heart. Amen. We would love to hear one sound together. Amen. Psalms 100. Amen. And we'll give you an opportunity if you desire to flip there. Some uh, may be familiar with it, but may desire just to flip there. Amen. Or to swipe or whatever you need to do. Amen. We're going to recite. Now, this is the last Sunday. Let's, let's do it. Amen. With the joy of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, as we declare why we come. Amen. Each Sunday into his house. All right. Let us, do, uh, let us uh, recite it together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord.
gone through, God has still blessed us. And we should be thankful to him for what he has done. Amen. The fact that we're still breathing. Amen. I don't believe no one had to be resuscitated this morning. Really, sometimes just take. Let's not wait for something bad happen to praise the Lord. Amen. While it's good, and then get get in while it's good. Amen. Amen. But we thank God. So this year, we just and those that have been here, we've just been trying to be a blessing to our community with our fun day. We had our youth weekend, and certainly uh, we just uh, we just did everything that we desired to do this year. And there's one thing that we wanted to do is be a blessing to Amen. Our season saints. So many times we forget about the ones that paved the way. About the ones that, yeah, amen. You feel me? About the ones that are here when everybody else don't show up. But seriously speaking, we thank God for our seasoned saints. And our seasoned saints here at Oak Grove that just keep things going, make sure that things are, amen, and just step in where it is needed. So we have something or not, seasoned saints that do that, amen. But right now, I'm talking about the seasoned saints. And y'all might have to talk about them in just a moment. And that's what we didn't have that moment. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the season saints. And in a time where people don't want to tell their age. Amen. You ask how old I own you. You know, you gotta, you know, some of us are having our 40th birthday for the uh, 37th time. But when you really think about it, it's a blessing to get older. Amen. Because the only way that you keep, amen, the only way that you not get old is that you die. Right. Amen. So we thank God that you're here. Don't be afraid to tell your age, but I'm just talking, amen. But we thank God for our season saints to pay with us. We just want to do something now to just honor those um, that uh, have just been here and made sure that we have what we need now. Don't no one get offended. Now, we did everything for you. That's right. Amen. That's right. We did everything for everybody else. That's right. Amen. We saved the best for last. Amen. <laughs> amen. Thank God for our season six. So we're going to call them one time, amen. Uh, we're going to ask if I were chairperson of our deacon's ministry, Deacon Howard Upman. Amen. 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 Those are in the mission, whoever has this, this deacon. So, amen, we're going to say to you what we say to everyone, what we're going to intend to say to everyone. Just thank God for you. This is on behalf of Old Road Missionary Baptist Church Apex. Thank God for all that you do. God bless you. God keep you as I pray. Amen. 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 Mother Shirley, Amen. 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 Thank God for you, Mother Shirley. Yeah. Amen. I ain't never seen her not happy. <laughs> Amen. To our trustee emeritus, John Thomas. Amen. He is. Amen. Most season said we can allow the trustee John. Amen. God bless you, trustee John. We thank God for you. Amen. God bless you. I keep this out for you. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. All right, we packed up, ladies. Uh, Sister Betty, amen. Come on now. Now, now wait a minute. Now, the other Sunday, when I, you know, I we now, you can't laugh at church, can't laugh no more. Now, when I forgot the scripture, I was going back and forth. Like, Which one is it? Amen. Now, <laughs> now when I call her, we got but one Sister Betty in there. When I call, she looked around like, who you talking to? <laughs> You pull a meat on me, did you? All right, we thank God for you, Sister Betty. Amen. God bless you, God. She is our prayer. <laughs> Trustee Ray Harris. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Trustee Ray Harris. Amen. He cuts our grass. Amen. I tried to cut it once, and he did it since. Amen. We thank God for you, Trustee. Amen. God bless you, God. She is our prayer. Amen. All right, Mother Effie Harris. Thank God for you. Amen. Thank God. 
God, but it's such a sweet, caring woman of God. Amen. 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 We thank God for you. We thank God for you. And you know you've had a busy year. You know, but this is on behalf of both brothers. We thank God for you. God bless you. God keep you as I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so I think we have. So we have So that's all our seasoned saints. Amen. Let's give our seasoned saints. Amen. All right. So someone said, I didn't get one. Amen. But if you keep on living. Yeah. 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 All right. So, amen. With that announcement, amen. Uh, we want to now put everybody else, amen. We didn't leave you all out after service is over with uh, in an orderly fashion. And of course, we want to distance. Amen. As we go into the Belgian Hall, so we have fruit bags now. When I was growing up, I don't know about you all, and we were appreciative when we got fruit bags. I'm going to say to you all today, it's going to be no harm, but if you know you're not going to eat it, amen, leave it, let somebody else take it, amen, amen, I guarantee you, amen. Um, so, amen, we have fruit bags for everyone, and I guarantee that's more than enough, and we want all of that stuff to go, because we will not be here for the next week or so, and it's only going to go to the past, so we want to be a blessing to everyone on today. All right, y'all happy? Yeah! All right, let's do it. Amen. It's all the time. Amen. We're going to prepare to worship the Lord doing by giving. Amen. Uh, amen. As God has blessed us on this year, amen. As the trustees, amen, come forth at this time as we prepare to worship Him through and by giving. Amen. God has been so good to us. He has blessed us in more ways than one. He just keeps on making ways for us, and we're grateful to him for that. Amen. And even if you only got one dollar, amen, that's a blessing. Amen. That's one dollar that someone didn't have. Amen. That you have. Amen. And so we say to us that desire to give one of the uh, virtual platform, um, you may give so, amen, on Cash App, uh, Giveify, or PayPal. The handle is still the same, Oak Road, NBC, Apex. If you're ever unsure, amen, there should be a picture of, amen, where you can, uh, that will confirm, uh, the church logo that will confirm uh, that this is the right location. All right, we're ready to give. Uh, let's stand to our feet. Yes. Amen. We have been doing a phenomenal job with the Finish Strong 2021 project. So we say unto you today, to our disciples, amen, we know what we have been um, uh, want to do, amen. So if you desire to uh, do that on today, amen, um, you may uh, give to our 20, uh, Finish Strong 2021 project. All right, we're going to ask, uh, we'll turn it over to the table, uh, that someone will ask God's blessings upon our own. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Yeah. Pray, Father God, that you go with us, stand by us, and never leave us. Give us strength through this day. Thank you for allowing us to see another day that went and comes to us, Father. Father, we thank you for this offering that we're about to receive. Sanctify, bless us, and let us be good, Father God. Well, go with us, stand by us, and never leave us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, now, my right side, you may be seated. Left side, if you will continue to stand and receive from the river, amen, that you will give to the Lord at this time.
Amen. Praise him. Amen. He just can't stop. Amen. Praise his name. Amen. Something about that man. Amen. You can call some other names, it won't be that for you, but I guarantee you, you call on his name. Amen. It makes a difference. Amen. So we thank God for all things. We're going to prepare. Amen. For Amen. The Word of God. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. And so, Amen. We're going to prepare ourselves for the Word of God. We're going to ask that our praise team will come back with two selections. Amen. Amen. They forewent one. Amen. Uh, for the sake of uh, space and time. Amen. But we're going to ask if our praise team will come back and give us two selections of their choosing. Amen. And then after which we will have the word of God. Amen. 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 Let's give them a hand clap of praise and come for it.
preach on the lineage of Jesus, and certainly we have learned that throughout the years. And uh, we're gonna, and so we were tossing between uh, whether we would uh, preach about him in the manger, per se, or the wise men, or uh, when Joseph, amen, espoused Mary, amen, put her away privately, according to the scripture. So much you could say on, uh, as it relates to a Christmas message, amen. Uh, but on today, we want to go this route from the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter number four. Galatians chapter number four, and I uh, call your attention to the fourth verse. Galatians chapter four, beginning at the fourth verse. If you have it, say amen. amen. Galatians four and four, and I'll be reading for your consideration from, amen, we do that stand for the reading of God's word. Last time this year, I've been asking y'all to stand. <laughs> Galatians, well, no, won't we have watched tonight? Amen. So we ask you to stand again. All right, last time on Sunday, the Lord said the same. Galatians chapter 4. Amen. I know we hot. Yeah, I don't know how to appeal. Galatians chapter 4, verse number 4. And, and it reads But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. To redeem, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might get this, receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Let the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, accept the blood of thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen. For your consideration on today, drawing and calling your attention to that fourth verse, if you need a key verse, which says, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman made under the law. I want to talk to us simply from this subject, the greatest gift. Amen. Amen. Why are you trying to nothing wrong with uh, Louis Vuitton? Nothing wrong with Michael Kors or <laughs> what's them uh, shoes that look kind of uh, easy? Uh, <laughs> ain't those those shoes that look like those are those shoes. Is that well? Amen. We wear that. I'm more so. Amen. I don't know. I think I'm. I guess I'm getting. Also, I'm getting somewhat complacent. I keep wearing the same thing, and that's all right. Amen. 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 So, but uh, as we look at this holiday season, how much we try to buy people gifts, and sometimes the greatest gift that you can buy them still won't suit them, Amen. because we live in an ungrateful society. You know, people now will, you know, we, uh, we scratch off the price, rip off the tag, uh, they'll Google it to see how much you paid. And then they'll cut you off next time they get you again. But that's the society that we live in. Y'all you know, come on here. You know, like, like you ain't never Google something, you see how much they paid. Yes. But this is the greatest gift. Acts 20 and 35 declares, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. That's a message all by itself because you wait for somebody to give you a gift. You may not speak to them for the rest of this year because they didn't get you no gift. More blessed to give than to receive. But during this time of year, even the most grouchy Ebenezer Scrooge among us likes to receive, open, and unwrap a gift. The worst branch on our jobs and in our families like to receive, tear up, and open up a gift on Christmas morning. If you're like some people that I know, you'll pick it up, shake it, try to guess what's inside of that box. And then if you're like some of us, you hope that you like it. And then if you're like some of the rest of us, you hope that whoever gave you that gift 
does not see your face if you don't like it. I heard a gift that someone gave you in life, and you open up, you say, <laughs> oh, good will. <laughs> you say thank you, but, uh, because we were talking to that, but my brothers and sisters, one Christmas morning, God sent us the very best gift that he had in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Not just to come and be a moral example, not just to come and be a philosophical leader, but to ransom us and save us from our sins. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, stay with me here. We can keep the, we can put the car in park, but we'll keep it running. Paul lets us know in 1 Corinthians 9 and 15, that is an unspeakable gift. An unimaginable gift. And God sent it to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Notice the text Paul says uh, to the church at Galatia in this scripture reading in verse 4. That when the fullness of time was come, God sent a son made of a woman. Jesus was born under the law to redeem them who were under the law. There was family who had a daughter. This child was stricken at the age of 16 with leukemia. Uh, her name was Marissa Ayala. And the outcome was bad because her life expectancy was no more than five years. Her parents, Abe and Mary Ayala had two children. They had a daughter, and Marissa had a brother named Aaron. But that daughter was stricken at the age of 16 with leukemia. She needed a bone marrow transplant. Her brother Aaron was tested. Brother Moore, he was not a match. The situation seemed horrific because the father had a procedure because children uh, or two children was all that he and his wife wanted, so he had a procedure. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a procedure. I'll give you the, you know, the end of virgin. Uh, but they needed a match from a sibling. Here Marissa was dying, and her brother was not a match. The father was not able to assist in producing more children due to a procedure uh, that he had, and the doctors advised that in five years, would be gone. These parents did not give up hope on finding the match, so they had to undo some things. God had to line up some things for their daughter to be saved. Abe decided, get this, to reverse his procedure. But the possibility of that working was less than 50%. The mother getting pregnant again at the age of 43 was a risk. And there was a 10% chance that it might work. It didn't stop there, but in addition, if the child would be born, the likelihood of it being a match was 50%. A procedure to reverse this previous procedure, it worked. Uh, the mother at the age of 43 got pregnant, so that worked. They had a daughter, that worked. But the daughter, get this, had to grow up. Stay with me here. So they had to wait for the child to grow up in order for the transplant to take place. Aaron, the brother, was not a match. Abe had to have a procedure to reverse his previous procedure, and the mother had to get pregnant all over again. So all the stars had to line up perfectly, and in the fullness of time, Marissa was saved through that transplant. Uh, okay, some of y'all saying, well, we, we, what do you mean when you talk about Mar Marissa? That I was lost on my way to hell. Abraham was born, but Abraham was not a match. Uh -huh. Isaac was born, but Isaac was not a match. Jacob was born, but Jacob was not a match. Moses was born, but Moses was not a match. Joshua came, and he was not a match. Then came Ezekiel and Daniel, Hosea, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Obadiah, Malachi, all of them, including John the Baptist, nobody was a match. But in the fullness of time, God sent forth a son made of a woman born under the law, and get this, I received my transgression. 
transfusion. Has <laughs> anybody here had a transfusion before? And aren't you glad that God redeemed you? And the blood of Jesus cleansed me from all of my sin. Just like everything had to line up in that family's life in the fullness of time. Let me tell you, when you look at the text, the statement in the fullness of time needs to really be investigated here. Uh, it was the right time. Look at that, in the fullness of time. What this literally means, it, 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 it was the right time for Jesus to be born. Yeah. The time was right religiously. Yeah. Uh, religiously, they were no longer under the Old Testament's sacrificial system, and they were no longer under the idolatrous practices uh -huh, that they had learned in the promised land. They were religiously ready for the birth of a Messiah. The time was not right, not just, or the time was right, not just religiously, but the time was right culturally. Because Greek was the dominant culture and language. Everybody could understand the nuances of language because of the cultural dialect of the Greek language. So the time was right culturally. Mm -hmm. The time was right religiously, but the time was also right politically. Mm -hmm. Rome was in power, and Rome had three aspects of their culture that made it right for Jesus to be born. The first was the Pax Romana, mm -hmm. where this stated that where the mix, where the mix enough freedom mm -hmm. with enough control to maintain itself as a world power. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was good politically because of the uh, Pax Romana. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Pax Romana made it possible for everyone everywhere to hear the gospel. Next there was the Lex Romana. Mm -hmm. Where the law that Rome had set up made it possible for a Roman citizen like Paul to preach the gospel without interruption. Uh, the third aspect of Rome's culture that made it right for Jesus to be born was the real Romana. Uh, all roads led to Rome. Matter of fact, there's an evangelism tool called the Roman Road where the gospel is spread throughout the whole world because of Rome's highway system. Somewhat like the interstate system in the United States, Rome built roads where everybody could travel. Uh, and so that as an effect, the gospel could get out everywhere because of the Pax Romana, the Lex Romana, and the Rio Romana. Mm -hmm. Go that when you leave here. Uh, Jesus was born at the right time. Uh, God let everything happen, get this, at the right time. Uh, you and I were born at the right time. We were not born too early. Mm -hmm. We were not born too late. You were not born to the wrong parents. We were not born in the wrong culture. But everything you needed was right there because you were born at the right time. Amen. Sometimes it looks like God is slowing up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it looks like God is delaying an answer and our prayers are not coming quick enough. Doors are not opening faster. Seems like ways are not being made quick enough. But let me tell you that, uh, that God has been God for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder why I have a witness that he's been God for a long time. And he knows, uh, he knows that to get you to your blessing before you're ready for it is to set you up for failure. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you're not ready spiritually to handle what God is getting ready to bless you with, you'll mess up your testimony. You have to go through some trouble. You have to go through some trials. You have to get sick in your body. You had to lose some loved ones. You had to have some family and friends to turn against you. You had to cry in the midnight hour. You had to suffer some setback because you would not be where you are right now had it not been for God's perfect plan. Saints both to say he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. He knows in time what you need before you were born. Now listen here, I'm trying to tell you something. At Christmas, we often make the mistake uh, that, that, that says Jesus got started in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a theological mistake that Jesus came into being 
on Christmas Day. No, no. He was born of a woman. But Christmas is not man's idea. Uh-huh. The birth of a Savior is not Jerusalem's idea. It's not the world's idea because a child is not only born, but according to Isaiah, it says a son is given. Okay, let me see if I can explain this. A child was in fact born, but before the child was born, God already gave his son. Okay, did y'all catch that? Yeah. Because see, there were many children born, but what was significant about the birth of Jesus? Because before he was born, he was already given. How can you give something that was not even born yet? And so this lets us know that before he was born, he was already given. Oh, yeah, verse If y'all would say amen. amen. Uh, before there was a when or where or a was or will be, Jesus was already on the mind of God in eternity past to come and save us right on time. Uh, then we sometimes make the cruel mistake of leaving him just there in a manger. Mm -hmm. Now that's a sweet scene of a baby lying there in a manger, but you cannot leave this Jesus in a manger because he did not stay as a baby. Mm -hmm. Ah, Lord have mercy. Ah, uh, he did not stay as a baby uh, because if he would have stayed as a baby, we would still be in our sins. Uh -huh. But he was born in Bethlehem. No, no. He was not just born to turn water into wine. No, no. He was not born just to take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed a multitude. No, no. He was born for a Friday. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Ah, uh, Lord, have mercy. Said, huh? He was born for a Friday because the fact of the matter is that if he would have stayed in the manger over there in Bethlehem, all of us would be in hell right now. Lord have mercy. But one Friday he prayed the price for our sins. Uh, but that's not all. That's not all because he wasn't just born for Friday. No, no. Uh, but early Sunday he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Uh, but he wasn't just born for Friday. He wasn't just born for Sunday. Uh, but the Bible says that he's seated at the right hand of God right now. Making intercession for you and me. And that would be good news because don't you know if the devil had his way, you'd be somewhere stroked out with heart attacks, chewing on toilet towel, have a chewing on toilet tissue, uh, homeless with no roof over your head. But there Jesus is interceding for you, saying, God, before you let the devil have her, let me stand in the gap. Aren't you glad that we have a high priest that makes intercession for us? in my case. Uh, there's some stuff I did yesterday uh, that he pleaded my case. Uh, I heard the O'Neill brother say it like this. Uh, Jesus dropped the charges. Uh, anybody in here been guilty? Uh, anybody here ever messed up? Uh, aren't you glad uh, that he dropped your charges? Uh, if you're glad to be here, you say uh, amen. Lord have mercy. Uh, I said he dropped the charges. Uh, because some of us should be locked up, uh, but he dropped the charges. Uh, some of us ought to be six feet under Yeah. 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 So 
so, so, so. He was born. Born of a woman. Uh, but, but Christmas, again, like I said, is not man's idea. Uh, because if it was man's idea, perhaps he would have been born at a different time. Uh, if it was man's idea when Herod wanted to kill him, he would have took him out. Uh, but I'm glad that everything happens at the right time. Yeah. And if he was born at the right time, I come to tell somebody he's coming back yeah. 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 at the right time. Lord, have mercy. I know some people say, I don't want to hear that. But let me tell you, say, Jesus is coming soon. I don't know when he's coming, but he's coming soon. When, Brother Cobb, will be the right time. Uh, because everyone is saying this, Jesus is on his way back. We don't know when he's coming back. But all I can tell you is he's coming back just like he said. Is anybody glad to know that one of these days we're going to have to deal with this foolishness? We're going to have to, Lord, have mercy. Most of it, not easy. Lord, have mercy. I was somebody who helped me this house. Because one of these days, I'm going to train my house for a building. You think you have seen some chandeliers. Lord, have mercy. You don't think you have seen some beautiful carpet, some beautiful homes down here. But I want you to add that there's a mansion prepared for you. So he's coming again. And every chance you get, just like the song says, you ought to tell it on the mountain. I mean, go tell it on the mountain. Who you going to tell? You ought to tell some black folks. Uh -huh. You ought to tell some white folks. You ought to tell some skinny folks. You ought to tell some not so skinny folks. You ought to tell the Chinese that he's coming. You ought to tell the homeless on the mountain. Uh, who you going to tell it about? Because we say this all the time. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus was born. And that's a beautiful thing, but are you telling anybody? Who should you be telling? You need to tell some hateful people. Tell some Chinese people. I was going to help me. Tell the folks in your family that Jesus is born. That's the origin. That's the origin of this mission. Now notice if you please the objective of this mission. Now zoom in to verse 5, uh, where he says, uh, verse number 5, to redeem them that were, get this, under the law. Y'all see that there? Uh, to redeem them that were lost. Mm -hmm. To redeem them who were slaves. Uh, that word redeem means to buy in the slave market through the payment of a redemption price. Redemption also means to buy for oneself, to forever remove the one bought the possibility of another sale. Right, let me say that one more time. Redemption also means to buy for oneself and to forever remove for the one bought the possibility of another sale. Okay, because somebody didn't get what I just said. We've been bought with a price. Uh -huh. And the price was paid for us. It makes it possible uh, that we can never get this be resold. Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all say, huh, what do you say? I'm glad that when Jesus paid that price, I can't never be sold to the devil no more. Lord, have mercy. Aren't you glad, Lord? The devil can do all of this stuff, but he can't have my soul. Because I've been redeemed. Bought with a Lord have mercy. So I can never be resold to the one that used to own me. I can be manipulated by the devil. I can be stimulated by the devil. I can even be motivated by the devil. I can be activated, but I can never be sold back to him because Jesus bought me with the price. And I've been redeemed. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I wonder do I have at least two people that saved around me? Uh, with all your bad habits, are you still saved? With all that junk you carry, are you still saved? See, that's good news. Because I don't care how much junk you carry, you can't get to the point where you carry so much junk that God ever stop loving you. Hallelujah to God. And somebody ought to be glad that you've been redeemed. Maybe you haven't been that bad. I ain't talking to you. You've been uh, Mr. or Miss Goody to you. Uh, maybe you haven't messed up that much. If that's you, you just watch while the rest of us carry on. Uh, because some of us in here know that we 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 know. I mean, we showed up 
know that we know if anybody else knows, we know that all the mess God brought us from. Lord have mercy. All the alcohol you used to drink, somebody will haul that to me. God brought you from drinking. All the dope you used to smoke, all the cussing you used to do, it was nobody but God. I'm not trying to act like I got it all together. I'm not trying to act like I don't have no problems. But I'm glad I got a savior. When I was messed up, he didn't wait for me to put on a creepy suit. He didn't wait for me to sit on the front row. I'm 
We've been friends long enough, huh? but it's time for you to go on. Huh? This is your stop, because huh? you can't go and be high. Huh? And that's why some of us huh? can't go no higher than we are, huh? because we want everybody huh? to go with us. Huh? We want everybody huh? to like us. Huh? We want everybody. Huh? But this next blessing, huh? this double blessing, huh? ain't for everybody. Huh? It's for you. But here, yeah. uh, you know how to get happy in your own house. So today, I get happy riding on 55. I get happy on number one. I get happy on 440 or even 751. <laughs> when you think about what God has brought you from. Lord have mercy, I can be on New Hill Road. Uh, a heart at the stoplight. Uh, but when you learn how to T-H-N-I-K think, you can T-H-A-N-K, you can think. Lord have mercy. And don't mind me. Lord have mercy. I said, don't mind me. In this next season, Lord, I lose my mind. All the hell I've been through.
know is we, we start a prayer chain. Because we won't let the devil have nothing. And, 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 and God delivered. And when I look back at that, what can you give me?
And then if you desire to come back and get one for Toto and Tito and Jermaine and Dickie. And Ralph and Jack and Jill and Sally and me. You can do so. But we want to make sure everyone has enough. So please, please we go back. Just take this. Give us your patience. Amen. As, as our mother up in this transition. But, but for real, y'all, y'all have a Merry Christmas. You know what? Don't let nobody steal your joy. I'm telling you, your hate is in your way. And you got to learn that when you get to a certain floor, you got to get off. Hold on. Yes, too, so, Merry Christmas on behalf of y'all. May the grace of God, love of Christ, and sweet communion.